Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One Good Vibrations. Have you ever thought of using electrical cord, two wire, lamp cord, also known as zip cord, as a transmission line for an antenna? If so, you're not the only one. I recall that a Jerry Hall Kilo One Tango Delta wrote an article for QST magazine quite a number of years ago. I don't know which one, but I just remember, I'm pretty sure that it was him. And he wrote this article about using zip cord as a two wire balanced transmission line. And uh, he evaluated the loss characteristics, the um, impedance, the characteristic impedance of the line, etc. And it wasn't too bad. Uh, it didn't, didn't work too badly. There's a power limitation, of course, because if you use too much power, the voltage at certain points along the line, particularly if there's a high standing wave ratio, uh, will cause arcing between the, between the conductors. But I just thought of a really simple dipole antenna that you can throw up when you're in a, not throw up by vomit, I mean you can put up when you're in a, in a rush, sort of like, like out in the sticks somewhere, and you want to operate and on HF, high frequency bands, and you have a transmatch with a balanced, a true balanced output, such as one of the Palstar designs. You can buy a, a length of electrical cord. I would recommend the heavier stuff. It's probably number 14 gauge conductors, stranded copper and just uh, take the overall length of the feed line plus one half of the length of the dipole, one side of the dipole. Buy enough, just buy a whole lot of this stuff, okay? Then take part of that cord and unzip, uh, unzip it so that it forms a two wire dipole antenna with each side being the same length, obviously, because you unzipped it, you know, from the end up to a certain point. At that point, secure it with electrical tape uh, very, very tightly so that it won't unzip any further when you string up the unzipped portion as a dipole antenna. And you can just tie the ends to nylon rope with a good knot a good secure uh, knot that you probably learned in, in when you were camping, a boy scout or girl scout camping, or just something that'll hold up and string that, uh, string those um, pieces of of nylon rope between a couple of trees or a couple of supports that you find out in your wilderness location, or alternatively, you can put the feed point at one tree and let the others hang down and to little bushes and make an inverted V out of it. I think you can kind of envision what I'm describing. is a dipole antenna fed with zip cord as a transmission line and then run that uh, zipped up part of the zip cord to your transmatch and connect it to the balanced output and voila you have a crude dipole antenna. The characteristic impedance of zip cord, I believe, was found to be in the vicinity of 90 to 100 ohms. Uh, and uh, so you just run that up to your dipole. Uh, it's a not, a, not a particularly low loss line, but it'll do if it's not too long. You run it down to your transmatch and connect your radio to it and Tune the transmatch and get on the air, start making contacts. I recommend an overall length of the dipole as one half of a wavelength at the lowest operating frequency you plan to use. So if you plan to operate at seven megahertz and above, 
the overall length of the dipole would be about 66 feet. And you don't have to be exact because the, you know that the uh, standing wave ratio is not going to be one to one on this line under any circumstances. You don't even necessarily have a way to measure it accurately, but you, you don't worry about any of that. You just want to get on the air with a reasonably efficient or un unefficient antenna. And that's one way to do it. Just go to the hardware store, get some zip cord, unzip some of it, secure the place where the unzipping uh, stops and the, and the zipping starts, send the zipped part down to the transmatch, connect the transmatch to the radio, connect the radio to your battery. You are using battery power and portable operation, I take it. Uh, or you can even use it at your home station if it's uh, if you want to get on the air and you're desperate to get on the air and you, you don't have time to put up anything more elaborate for a while. You just to put up something like that. And uh, you'll, you'll get on the air and you will make contacts if you, if you go through the motions and hook it up. And uh, that's about all there is to it. Uh, the lowest operating frequency, if it's 7 megahertz, a half wavelength is 66 feet long. That means you would unzip 33 feet of the cord, secure it at that point with electrical tape to keep it from unzipping any further under stress, and then just string it up between a couple of supports, tied with Boy Scout or Girl Scout knots to nylon rope. And you can envision all of this, I'm sure. Uh, very simple, unobtrusive, uh, rather crude, but not too inefficient, and certainly worthy of a, of a try if you have no alternative. And, or, if, you know, if, if you don't want to spend a whole lot of time and money and energy putting up an antenna for quick use. Should work pretty good. I've never actually done it, but I have... Uh, use television twin lead, uh, which you can usually also get at a hardware store, 300 ohm stuff with a random dipole and gotten decent results. So go for it. Get on the air. That's just one more weird idea from your weird radio correspondent, Stan Jibalisco W1GV, saying 73. And so long, which, regardless of the antenna type, regardless of the power level, regardless of your location, so long, also translates in my native fist to da-da-da-da-da.